It's a, uh, it's a really beautiful day, and I really appreciate uh, being here and speaking to you. Um, I, uh, uh, yeah, I like being short notice, because then I got an excuse so to sound terrible, so that's great. <laughs> so, so I've really been playing that up in case you've been So anyway, so um, I'm really humbled to be in this room. I had no idea that I would be surrounded by a lot of people who have been really profound influences on my life, so I really have to say that before. Uh, Stan has been a mentor to me, or somebody who I've looked up to, even when I was a punk who would argue with absolutely everything he said, he was patient and loving and caring, uh, and he's been a model, and it's always stuck with me, the kind of uh, educator that Stan has been, and also the kind of man that he's been, so he's, he's very much influenced on my life. Adrian? Yes, I agree, completely. There should be statues of Stan, not Sir John A. <laughs> because, and I'm, I really believe that, because someone like Stan has led us, and uh, he's, been in, he's been in the struggles for so long. But anyways, enough about Stan. This is Stan Dedication Night. So, um, Adrian, I would say the same about Adrian, although I've just recently got to know him through, uh, through this, this uh, work that we've done together with the... Uh, Mennonite Central Committee and all this other sort of stuff that we've done just in the past year, really, I've got mm-hmm. to know you. Mm-hmm. But then also, uh, Tim over here, I worked on your campaign, uh, and way back when we uh, defeated Philman. Okay, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> and I worked for your dad. <laughs> <laughs> so so, the, so the, cir- the circles continue. So, mm-hmm. so uh, uh, that's the only campaign I've ever worked on in my whole life is your campaign. So I, was, I had no idea you'd be here, but it was a real honor to do that work for you. So uh, I want to talk a little bit today about the future, and, uh, and I really could talk about so many other people that are, actually I heard there's the name Bud here, the name Richard, really profound influences on my life. Um, uh, if you read Manitowabo, you'll see those names that are on the pages of that book and really the way they've influenced me as well. Um, I want to talk a little bit today about um, the current situation within the city, where we have gone, where we have come from, where we are, and then where we're going. So I'll try to, try to be as concise as I can in what I think that is the uh, constituent moment of this time period, which is one of choice, and it's one of opportunity. We have more opportunity in 2015 to make a future for this country than we ever have had before, because we, have at a, we are at a juncture where we have a very large segment of the population who's engaged, interested, and have the opportunity more than ever so in the past. We have, uh, as legislation like the Indian Act begins to be peeled away, as, be, as we have um, uh, a very strong, smart, educated young population who is very in tune with the issues, probably more than ever before. If you, if you just, well, of course we didn't have Twitter in the 70s and the 80s, but, but Twitter is evidence of how many people are intellectually engaged with the moment. We, we, uh, we, we have a moment within the country that is extremely exciting. It is an extremely exciting moment. And it is my firm belief that it's time, and it, ha- it has always been that time, but I think that it is more, t- more important than ever that Christians have the opportunity to retake, retake the direction of the country along with Indigenous people. Christians have, have uh, uh, an opportunity to bring peace and reconciliation perhaps more than any other um, community in the country, and they have the way. Uh, they have. They already have the teachings, but it's the way to walk with those teachings, to walk alongside with what Indigenous people are leading us right now. Um, Sir John, uh, Sir Johnny, God, he's on my mind already. John Ralston Saul, <laughs> totally different John. <laughs> just published a book, which is really making a lot of headway, and I encourage you to read it if you. Uh, Take it out in the library if you don't feel like buying it, but uh, it's a book called The Comeback. And what he suggests in the book is that at the most profound um, uh, assault on our constitutional foundation as a country, the two omnibus legislations introduced by the Harper government uh, approximately two and a half years ago, Um, which removed the protection, removed more protections of water and the environment than ever before, and and reconstituted a draconian removal of indigenous territories that is, you know, shadows of the Indian Act in 1876. Uh, these two omnibus legislations, which have now been deemed by courts as un- unconstitutional and illegal, mm-hmm. 
Um, during those two moments, it wasn't Canadians who led the rebuke of that or the resistance to that. It was Indigenous people, and it was Indigenous people who were committed to the land. So I really appreciate today when you said we're standing on the land. I, I think often we forget that and we start drawing the boundaries right away, you know, whether it be called treaties or provinces or nations or whatever. But it is always first and foremost the land. And it was the women and the young people who led that movement and that, that rebuke to those omnibus legislations. And, the, and, and reminded us that we need to think of the water and the earth first. That is not new. The resistance to uh, colonial exploitation, or whatever, whatever you want to call it, we'll just call it exploitation. I hate using words like colonization and racism. And I just think they're overused. We've lost meaning behind them. I really don't like use. I never use those words. I lie because I actually did use it when I was describing Sir John A. But, but, so you're going to be like, he lied. So I, I, I did, but I only use them very sparingly and very rarely do I ever use the R word, do I ever use colonization or colonialism, only because I think they're way overused and people don't really know what that means anymore. Anyways, um, indigenous uh, missionaries of the early 19th century led the, for, the foregrounding to the resistance in 2013 of the omnibus legislation called Idle No More. 